Welcome to Electron Online. In the previous video, we looked at the sector of a circle. That's where we drew two lines from the center circle to the edge of the circle. We had an angle between them, and that entire area here was representative of what we call the sector of the circle. Now, if we draw a chord from where the, where the radius touches the circle there to where the radius touches the circle there, then we have a small little piece right here on the outside of that that's called the segment of a circle. What if we want to find the area of the segment of a circle? Well, to do that, we can say that the area of a segment, the area of a segment, is equal to the area of the sector, SEC for sector, and I'll just write it out, minus the area of the triangle, minus the area of the triangle. So to find the area of the segment right here, segment, I take the area of the sector, which is the entire sector, and subtract the area of the triangle. So we already know how to find the area of the sector. That is going to be equal to, that would be the angle theta divided by 360 degrees, the ratio times the area of the whole circle, which was pi r squared. So this would be the area of the entire sector, like we saw in the previous video. But now from that, we want to subtract the area of the triangle. Thus, in order to find the area of the segment, it all comes down to finding the area of the triangle. And this is how we can do that. Let's take this triangle and draw that over here. So using the angle here at the top, we can draw it like this. And over here, we have the angle theta. Here we have the side r, and of course, that will be on both sides because that will be the radius in both cases. And then we have the base of the triangle right here. So we need to find the area of that triangle. In order to do that, we need to have a relationship between the height of the triangle, the base of the triangle, and r, and that relationship will come through the angle theta. To make it a little bit easier, what we're going to do is we're going to just take half the triangle here, redraw that half. At the bottom here, we have the base divided by 2. It will now be half the base. This will be considered the height of the triangle. That's this height right here. And then we still have r right there. And now we have the angle here divided by 2, because now we only have half the angle. Now we're going to relate these to one another using the trig functions. The first one can be done by using the sine of the angle. So the sine of theta divided by 2, by definition, is equal to the ratio of the opposite side to the angle divided by the hypotenuse. So in this case, that will be b over 2 divided by the hypotenuse, which is r, which means we can now relate the base of the triangle relative to r using that angle. So in other words, we can say that from here that b divided by 2 is equal to r times the sine of half the angle. And then if we multiply both sides by 2, we can say that b is equal to 2r times the sine of half the angle. We can do the same to find the height of the triangle. So we can say that the cosine of the angle, theta divided by 2, is equal to the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. That would be h over r, which means we can define h as being equal to r times the cosine of theta divided by 2. So now that we have those two relationships, what we can do is go ahead and define the area of the triangle. The area of the triangle is equal to 1 half the base times the height, which is equal to 1 half the base, and the base is right here, which is 2 times the radius of the circle, times the sine of theta divided by 2, times the height, which is defined here, which can be defined as the radius times the cosine of theta divided by 2. And we can leave it in that form, or we can say, well, there's a trigonometric identity, which can simplify the product of the sine of an angle times the cosine of the angle. So this can be simplified to be as follows. The area of the triangle is therefore equal to 1 half times 2 cancels out. 
r times r becomes r squared, so this becomes r squared, and the sine of half the angle times the cosine of half the angle can be written as one half times the sine of twice that angle, which would be theta instead of theta divided by two. Whoop, there we go. And so ultimately we can say that this can be written as one half the radius squared times the sine of the angle theta. And this is how we find the area of a segment of a circle. Now you may say, well, I'm not familiar yet with sines and cosines and I didn't quite follow what you were doing. And that's quite all right. Uh, sometimes there are certain things in, in geometry that we're not able to do quite well unless we understand a little bit of trigonometry. But for those who've seen this before and can say, oh, all right, that makes sense, so much more power to you. Otherwise, trying to calculate the area of a segment may at this point still be off limits until we have approximations that we can use instead of using the trick functions. But that's how it's done, and that's how we find the area of a segment.